G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in today's video I'll be taking you through the difference between journey data and contact data and how they affect your journeys and decision splits in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So contact data and journey data are terms you may have encountered when you've been building your very own journeys in Journey Builder or studying for the Salesforce Marketing Cloud Email Specialist exam. Now journey data is static data that is preserved while the record is in the journey while contact data is dynamic and it is queried on request. So put simply, journey data is a snapshot of the data that a record entered the journey with. And since you can enter a journey in various different ways, such as from a data extension, a Salesforce connector, or even an API event, journey data represents all the data that was present in the data extension or the payload when the journey was initiated for that subscriber. Contact data, on the other hand, is sourced in real time. It's looked up using the relationships built in your attribute groups as shown in the data designer in Contact Builder. You can think of this as working like a lookup function in Mscript in one of your emails. It looks up the data in real time. So let's visualize this for a simple data extension journey. In this scenario, I have a data extension that contains a summary of all new subscribers in my business. It's refreshed every day in Marketing Cloud using SQL update activity from some data that's imported via an FTP. I've also got this data extension connected to my contacts via an attribute group in Contact Builder. Now each day, Journey Builder initiates the journey for all new records found in the data extension. So here are my two records going into the journey. Note that both records have a membership status of basic as they enter the journey. So this value, along with all the other values in the data extension, represent their journey data. Now, a few days into the welcome journey, one of these records upgrades their membership to premium. So the next day, the data is updated via the FTP, via SQL into Marketing Cloud, and updates the data extension, meaning that the upgraded member will have a status of premium in their data extension. Back in Journey Builder, this means the contact data, the looked up and real time value for this record, is going to show as premium. However, the journey data value for this record will still show as basic. That's because basic was the value that the subscriber entered the journey with. So why does this matter? Why have static and dynamic data for journeys? Surely using dynamic real-time data is the best data to use for all situations, right? Well, no. Sometimes having a memory of the values that a contact entered the journey with is important for deciding how a contact should progress through a journey. For example, you may want to run a campaign where subscribers are asked to update their details or marketing preferences. The main customer data extension already has a last modified date and you don't want to go adding more fields or build complex data extensions and SQL solutions. You could simply add eligible subscribers into a journey with their last modified date. And then in your decision splits later on, you can check to see if the contact data for the last modified date, that is the real time data, is greater than or occurs after the journey data of the last modified date. That's the date that they enter the journey with. And if the contact data date is more recent, it means that subscriber has changed their details since they entered your journey. So as you can see, understanding how both journey and contact data work in Salesforce Marketing Cloud can enable you to leverage the value of having both stored and real-time data in your decision splits allowing you to craft journeys that respond to each subscriber's progress through your journey. And I hope you enjoyed this quick intro to the journey and contact data in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. If you found today's video useful, then please let me know in the comments below with a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.